Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. You can now use the promo code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another standard deck, and today's deck is called Dread Dried. It's a black green Bolas Citadel life gain deck, a deck that has been in the works for quite a while, but I never got around to making a video about it. But now with M21, we got a whole bunch of new additions, including Vito, Thorn of the Dusk Rose, as well as Azusa, and some other neat inclusions. So, what's the idea behind the deck? We're a Bolas Citadel deck, the six mana legendary artifact, saying we can look at the top card of our library anytime and we may play land cards and cast spells from the top of our library and if we cast a spell this way we pay life equal to its converted mana cost rather than paying its mana cost and if we ever get to 10 permanents we can sacrifice them to deal 10 damage to your opponent. So Bolas Citadel is a very powerful card draw engine that combines exceptionally nicely with cards like Azusa and Dried of the Elysian Grove since those let us play additional lands of the top very similar to the Experimental Frenzy deck where we get to play lands of the top of our deck and then of course if we've got a bunch of life gain we can make up for the life loss from Bolas Citadel so we can keep playing spells for free off the top of our deck and as you'll see we've got a lot of spells in the deck that we can essentially play for free with Bolas Citadel in play including in Gift of Paradise, getting 3 life when it enters the battlefield, and Bond of Flourishing, gaining 3 for the cost of 2 life, so even that's just 1 life total. And we've got some other nice life gain synergies. So Bolas Citadel is the very powerful end game of this deck, but besides Bolas Citadel, we're also a Dread Presence Dryad deck. So Dread Presence is the 4 mana nightmare, it's a 3 3, and whenever a swamp enters the battlefield under our control, we can choose one between dealing 2 damage to any target and gaining 2 life, or drawing a card and losing 1 life. And Dread Presence combines very nicely with the Dried of the Elysian Grove, which not only lets us play an additional land on each of our turns, potentially letting us play an additional Swamp to trigger Dread Presence, but it also says lands we control are every basic land type in addition to their other types, so even if we play a basic Forest, it's still gonna trigger the Dread Presence, because it will count as a Swamp, and the best synergy is with Fabled Passage, because when we play Fabled Passage, it's gonna count as a Swamp, triggering Dread Presence, and then when we sacrifice a Fabled Passage to get another basic, can even be a basic Forest, it will trigger Dread Presence once again, so Fabled Passage can trigger twice, which is great. So those are some of the key synergies in the deck. So let's take a look at our entire deck list, starting out with our 1-drops, where we have the full playset of Arboreal Grazer, alongside 29 lands. This deck is incredibly mana-hungry because of all these synergies between Dryad and Azusa wanting us to play more lands, and then of course Dread Presence wanting a lot of swamps. So the deck wants to play a lot of lands. 29 is, I think, the bare minimum. Might even want to go up to 30 but uh, I wanted to make room for some additional spells as well. So 29 lands and then as many swamps as possible. And then at 2 mana we've got the full playset of Bond of Flourishing, which lets us take a look at the top 3, reveal a permanent card and put it into our hand and gains 3 life. So this can help us find Bolas Citadel, Dread Presence, Dryad, whatever we need. Often we will also just get a land with Bond of Flourishing because the deck is so mana hungry. Then we've got two copies of Scavenging Ooze, another nice addition from M21, 2 mana 2-2 two -two that can exile cards from graveyards, and if we exile a creature card we can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it and gain 1 life, so acts as a bit of graveyard hate, but also has a bit of life gain synergy. And then another nice addition is a Maze Mind Tome, 2 mana artifact, that we can tap right away to scry 1 and put a page counter on it, and then we can also pay 2 mana and tap it to draw a card and put a page counter on it, and once we reach the 4th page counter we have to exile it, but we also gain 4 life, so even more life gain synergy, and the scry 1 is also very useful if we're going off with Bolas Citadel, since we can put undesirable cards on the bottom so we can keep going off. Then at 3 mana we've got our 2 copies of Gift of Paradise, excellent for ramping us into a turn 4 Dread Presence so we can still play Swamp afterwards, and of course a Life Gain is also nice with Bolas Citadel and Vito. Then we've got 4 copies of Dryad of Elysian Grove, which is the preferred 3 mana creature because it turns all our lands into Swamps, and then 2 copies of Azusa Lost But Seeking, which is legendary so we don't really want to draw 2 of them, but it does allow us to play 2 additional lands instead of just 1, so potentially even more powerful once we're going off with the Citadel. And two copies of Vito, Thorn of the Dusk Rose, which can very quickly end the game for us, as whenever we gain life, target opponent loses that much life. So all of a sudden, all those free life gain triggers we're getting with Bolas Citadel turn into an actual damage output. Once we start dealing damage with Dread Presence triggers, we deal four damage instead of just two, so that does start adding up. And every now and then we might activate the ability to give all our creatures lifelink, which also translates into a lot of damage. 
and then we've got our four copies of Drunk Presence, the centerpiece of the deck, and two copies of Cavalier of Knights as a 5-mana 4-5 lifelink, that when it enters the battlefield we can sacrifice another creature, and if we do we can destroy a creature an opponent controls, so the best pairing of course with Cavalier is Arboreal Grazer, which we don't mind sacrificing. Every now and then we might have an additional legendary creature in hand, so we don't mind sacrificing one in play, but for the most part we want to be sacrificing Arboreal Grazers, and then when the Cavalier dies we can return a creature card with convert mana cost 3 or less from our graveyard to the battlefield, so we can get back every creature in the deck besides Dread Presence, and of course 4-5 Lifelink also plays quite nicely with Vito and Bolas of Citadel, and then our three copies of Bolas of Citadel really want to draw the first copy, we also have Bone of Flourishing to help with that, and all the card draw from Dread Presence, but of course it is a 6 mana card so we don't want to see it on top of our deck with another Bolas of Citadel. And then taking a look at our mana base, we've got 13 basic swamps for Dread Presence. When playing out the games we also want to try and keep swamps in hand to trigger Dread Presence if we draw it later. And then 8 basic forests, which is kind of the bare minimum we can get away with to still reliably play our Boreal Grazer on turn 1. For Overgrown Tombs, which also count as swamps. And for Fabled Passage, which can trigger Dread Presence twice with Dryad of Elysian Grove in play and can also fetch up a swamp if needed. And we could also potentially be playing some of the Triomes, which also count as Swamps, but I haven't found them to be necessary. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, with a pretty unexciting but definitely keepable hand. There is a bit of tension with Scavenging Ooze wanting a lot of green mana and us wanting a lot of swamps, but of course once we find Dryad of Legion Grove we can just tap our swamps for green mana as well. Put it on some sort of four color control deck. Scavenging Ooze of course very useful against Uro and various escape synergies. Aha, uh -huh, opponents on the Sanctum deck. In turn 3, Sanctum of Fruitful Harvest. Yeah, that's scary. Kaya's Wrath to clear the board. Find a Dread Presence. Usually want to wait with playing Dread Presence so we can play a land right away to get some value, but I don't think we have any other great options here. Doom Foretold will force me to sacrifice a Presence. So next turn I'll be able to play Citadel, even if they make us sacrifice Gift of Paradise. And then hopefully Citadel delivers the goods. Maybe start out with uh, Azusa or Dryad of Legion Grove on top. Opponent does get rid of the Doom Foretold. So I'll be able to play Citadel and still have a land drop available, which makes it much better. Birth against the planes. All right, perfect. Probably play this tapped. I don't think I have a great use for tomb, and eh, maybe if I find. Something like a uh, Bond of Flourishing, I'll want it. Play the Swamp. We'll draw a card and lose one life. And now I can play the Grazer, which is pretty nice here. Can keep going. Another Dryads. Let's see, I could just play the Cavalier, but I am getting pretty low on life. 
Hmm, I guess I'll just draw the Cavalier. Alright, go to one. It's a little scary. So now I want to play Fabled Passage. Deal two. And then I guess we fetch. I would like to play Azusa, but it's gonna cost me three life. I can scry to the bottom as well with a tome. Let's fetch. Scry that to the bottom. Gift we can play. Citadel will scry. Could also draw it, but... Let's put it on the bottom. Alright, and that's the end of our turn. Points at 14. We have exactly 10 permanents to use Citadel. So I could put my opponent to 4 here, which is not quite lethal. In hindsight, maybe just drawing the Citadel with Tome was better here, since we didn't have a ton of other ways to spend our mana. Kaya's Wrath. So I can put my opponent to 2 here by sacking Citadel, but then I lose Citadel, so then I deeply regret not uh, using the Tome to draw, but I guess we still have Citadel and 2 Tomes, so we'll be alright. Opponent gains 1 from the wall dying. They've got their own Dryads for mana fixing. Fable Passage on top. Scry that to the bottom. I guess I could draw at this point. Sure. Azusa's perfect. Go to one briefly. There's Vito. Razor is going to cost me one life, so got to be careful here. So I guess we'll draw the Grazer. And then play Swamp, play Grazer. And uh, pass a turn. Don't have a ton of cards remaining, 21. Still have a few Dread Presences left. I think we've only drawn Two of them, so there's still two remaining. Ooh, Dance of the Mance for X equals six. So those turn into creatures. Doom Foretold triggers. We'll sack and gifts. Could also sack Cavalier to then get back. A Dried of Legion Groves or Scavenging Ooze could be quite useful. But I'll just sack a gift. Not our Azusa, not super useful. So let's just draw Azusa. Grazer I can play. Could of course attack first to get my life gain uh, with Cavalier in. 
That seems reasonable. Could also attack with Alzusa since we have a backup and use lifelink here with Vito. Put my opponent to 10 and then Citadel might be able to finish them off. And then Ooze versus Dried. I'll go with Ooze. Double ooze. We'll draw. There's Drunk Presence. So I need to gain a bit of life here. So you can play the Drunk Presence. Although I guess my opponent might just be dead if I activate Citadel here. But uh, we could keep going by getting some more life with Ooze and I'm playing Dryads and I'm playing more lands. Riots, play Fable Passage. Don't know if we have any fetchables left. Can just cast a bond as well, which uh, would cost me two life and deal three damage. Sweet, so the deck showing a lot of resiliency against sweeper effects and Citadel putting in a ton of work and really seeing all the synergies coming together here. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Gift of Paradise into Dread Presence is a nice curve. Probably just gonna try and find a land with Bond of Flourishing. And I guess I'll take a Fabled Passage. Facing Mono Blue. I do want to enchant a swamp, so that way if we draw scavenging ooze we'll have more green mana to use the ability. And then next turn I could go Dread Presence, play Overgrown Tomb, play Grazer, although the Grazer will put the land into play tapped, so that's not super useful. But I think that's still the play. And then Grazer is nice alongside Cavalier of Night. Drug Presence gets quenched, sadly. Alright, hopefully they're out of counter spells for Citadel next turn. Bone is still keeping up for mana. I guess I'll fetch upkeep here. Get a forest, keep swamps in the deck for Dark Presence. Draw Veto. Just gonna jam. Alright, that worked out. Might see a creature specific counter spell. Keep going, play Vito. 
Not bad. Another omen of the sea. Not sure what our opponent's game plan is. Maybe some blue devotion synergies. Could always see Brazen Borrower bouncing the Citadel, although then we probably would have seen that in response to me casting my first spell. And now we're just hoping to find a Dread Presence and more creatures in general. Alright, they did have a Brazen Borrower. Maybe they drew into it with the Omen of the Sea, which is why they didn't bounce it right away. But we've got a lot of mana now, and we can just start activating Veto too if we want to. I see your opponent was missing black mana. Well, can just replay the Citadel. Can definitely pay for Quench this time. Another Citadel, I guess I'll still play it here. Don't think I want to put Tomb in play, since it could still be useful for a future Dread Presence. Essence Capture, fair enough. I guess I'll take Cavalier. Take another Dryads. Let's see. Play Dryads. There's Drunk Presence at long last. And we can just go face. And our opponent scoops it up. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Uh, this hand could use a few extra lands to ramp us into the Citadel. But I'll try. Turn one Stone Quill, so maybe a green Stompy deck. So gotta watch out for gem racers destroying my Bolas Citadel. Could see a giant growth, but that's fine by me. Titanic growth even. I think I will play the swamp here, because that way if we draw land we get to play Citadel and then Still use the extra land drops from Azusa with Citadel in play. Alright, play Tome instead. And then I'm tempted to just draw a card here. I could scry, play Veto. I guess the only thing we want is a land here. So I might as well scry, play Veto and be more mana efficient. And then once we start going off with Citadel, we'll have Veto in play. So you get to Scry end of turn, and to get on upkeep if I don't find a land. Garrick. Good synergy with the Harbinger here, as he can give it Trample. We just want to keep our life total as high as possible. So this is gonna hurt. But we could have a pretty good turn here. There's a land, so I'll keep it. Alright. Don't fail us now, Citadel. 
Grazer, not the best, but I guess it's only one life. Dryad is great here. And a presence, alright, now we just need some lands over the top. Gift I can't play, sadly, so I'll need to bottom it. And I'm really just hoping for a string of lands. Ooze. Alright, so we had two additional land drops remaining, or three maybe even. And uh, didn't get to use any of them, which feels bad. Questing beasts, I have to jump with Dread Presence, but I can just give a trample with Garruk. So we're dead. Alright, GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Facing Kahira. Uh, double Gracers, not amazing here, but I'll keep. Sample of Abandon. So we get to play Grazer and Ooze. And then we're just hoping to draw some swamps over the top for a Dread Presence. Let's see if they uh, risk it, if they don't. Swamp here would be great, get to play two Dread Presences and draw two cards, or maybe deal for damage. Alright, so opponents on an Elemental Synergy deck here. Just waiting for those swamps. Intervention takes out ooze, that's fine. Wasn't super attached to the ooze. Another healer. Typically only see healer once there's already a Risen Reef in play. Luckily, we were spared that fate. Let's draw some cards. Well, as soon as we find another lands, we are ready to rumble. Now Kahira will pump all these healers. It's gonna be Cavalier of Thorns instead. The elemental deck without Risen Reef is a lot more manageable. They also have the Awakener to get Risen Reef back from the graveyard. And a Neoform is gonna go get Risen Reef at long last. Alright, no land sadly, but maybe we can draw one. Eh, not the land I was hoping for, but I'll take it. So next turn we get to go off with Citadel. So hopefully nothing too crazy happens. Alright. Awakener, is there a reef in the graveyard? There's not, but there is Scampering Scorcher. So that could uh, trigger a Risen Reef a whole bunch. Alright, so the opponent gets to have their fun here. Hopefully we get to have our fun next turn. Just want to keep our life total high, so we have more life to work with. So 
So this will jump. And then this is going to get sacrificed. I guess I'll just uh, prevent some damage here. It's go time. Another Citadel off the top right away. Do I want to pay six life? I don't think I do. Could of course also draw it by playing my land. Alright. So we get a trigger. Probably want to take out Risen Reef. And then we'll draw with the other one. Dried on top, so we want to play Dried, paying life, I think, or I guess we could just play it since we have three mana. So I can draw... and then I guess draw again. Sure. And a Fable Passage on top is perfect. I guess I keep drawing. Veto. Nice. And now dealing damage is a lot more appealing. I'll just get a Forest here to keep more Swamps in the deck. And then... Do we start taking out healers? Do we just go face? Let's just go face. Alright, not a bad turn. We're close to 10 permanents for Citadel, so we could easily burn them out next turn. Kahira will pump their team, so that could potentially represent a decent chunk of damage. But the Dread Presences line up well against 2-3 healers. Alright, another Neoform. Can get another Awakener, which can get back Risen Reef. For a bunch more triggers. Or they might go for another Scampering Scorcher instead. So I'm pretty sure we can win the game next turn, so I don't want to risk losing any Dread Presences or key creatures. So I'll just block Awakener with Grazer here. And I guess this is fine. Alright, on math. Takes out Dread Presence. So let's get this party started. Another veto. I guess, um... I'll just pay three life. And that should do it. All right, sweet. Beat Teamer Elementals. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. This hand's not great. 
with double grazer only three lands, but we do have Tome to scry into more lands and then Citadel as the payoff. So we'll try it. Sample of Malady. So I'll play another Grazer. And we can start drawing with Tome. I don't think I'll Scry end of turn. Although I guess I do need a land still. So Scrying for a land and then just drawing in my next turn is fine. Double Grazer on each side. And a goose. Don't need ooze. Alright, dried's nice, so next turn I get to scry on upkeep. Look for land six, and then we're off to the races. And this might be the mirror match. Cultivate instead. Maybe it's a more traditional ramp deck. Having to remember to put a stop on upkeep brings me back to treasure map. Another tome would be okay, but a land would be so much better here. Perfect. Dread Presence. Alright, we depleted our land drops for the turn, but uh, next turn should be quite good. Does our opponent have their own citadel? It's gonna be a Solemn Simulacrum instead. Ugin next turn would be pretty painful, and our opponent is using the Ugin avatar, so not sure how much I should read into that. Overgrown two months up, we'll start there. Could also kill the goose, and then they might not have land eight. Sure. Do I need to play this untapped? Probably not. Find Azusa. Find Vito. Not bad. Can still draw with the tome, but I guess I'll shuffle first. If there's a citadel on top, I won't mind drawing it in case I do have Ugin to wipe the board. Not Azusa. And our opponent packs it in. We can activate Vito's ability, attack, and uh, our opponent would be dead. Sweet, so yeah, Vito's damage definitely starts adding up pretty quickly. And before you know it, the opponent is dead. So yeah, not a bad showing of our black-green Citadel deck. Definitely very reminiscent of the red-green Experimental Frenzy deck that I featured recently in Historic. So a lot of fun to play if you like playing lands at the top of your deck. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.
I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.